Good morning, Norwich Christian Church. We are so pleased that we can be with each and every one of you this morning, coming to you in your homes. I heard someone um, share a, a comment a while back, and they said, oh, looks like the devil's won because the devil has closed down all these churches. The person's response was, oh, heavens no. God won that one because God has opened a church in every home. So as we bring this message to your home today through the internet and through the website, we hope that each and every one of you will, will think about that message and just you know look for the Holy Spirit's presence in your home as we continue to battle through this times of the COVID-19 separation. We, we clearly look forward to the time that, that we can all be back together again. And in the meantime, just know that God is surrounding you with his love and encouragement to help us get through these times. I do want to share some announcements with you this morning. Uh, a couple of different things. Uh, for those of you who'd like to hear the audio worship CDs, those are available at the foyer outside the church office. So swing on by. The office is open from 9 to 1. And um, so please know that. And also want to share that the office is open Monday through Thursday from 9 to 1. So in case you do have some uh, church business, there's that time. And then Friday, it's from 9 to 1030. Feel free to call the office and uh, leave a message if you'd like. The uh, phone number for Jen is 319-440-1769. Or for Stu, it's 540-420-1964. And those are their cell numbers, so feel free to call them if you need anything. Also want to lift up that the church's financial needs continue on. Just like your house mortgage payments and utility bills still need to be paid, the churches do as well. So please, if you would, take a moment to review the pledge that you made to support the church earlier this year. And if you would like to, um, just please drop a check off or mail a check to the church. And please use that to help continue the church's ministries. Social distancing, big popular thing. There's some very nice masks available in the, uh, and I'm pointing, and you all know where it is, out in the foyer. Um, so when you come in. Joanne Pruitt has made some lovely masks that have NCC embroidered on the front. So they will be very popular and a way to um, start some conversations as you're out and about, too. And also, if you'd like to have some more masks of your own, Joanne's happy to make those. So if you'd like to reach out to her and, and she'd be happy to do that, you can call Joanne at 319-310-2094. And also, we ask for, for prayers for Teresa Williams as she works in the hospital, the ER at St. Luke's, and any other church members, family and friends that you know who've been impacted by the COVID-19. The power of prayer is, is unbelievable. So please, you know, take a moment to reach out and, and say prayers for those folks. And also take the time to reach out and make a phone call to those folks that you haven't seen for a while because they'd love to hear your voice and just feel that connection again. And also, we all know that video lessons for the Praise Builders and the Sunshine Time, those are available. Links will be emailed to parents and the caregivers weekly, so please be sure to check in with those. And also, if you find that you're not getting regular email um, notices from the office with messages from Pastor Stu, uh, please do reach out to the office and make sure that they have your most current email on there. Those are going out on a regular basis, and if you're not getting it, then they don't have your correct email. So please look to do that. We want to lift up a couple other things. Wanted you to know that in a couple of weeks, well, let me ask a second. How many of you remember going to the drive-in movies a few years back? Okay, I did, a lot of folks did. And what we want to do is have a drive-in church service. So we're working to pull that off in two weeks. We'd love to have the church park not just full of cars. So we'll be using, now remember those clunky boxes used to hang from the windows? No, we're not doing that. We're going to use uh, much higher technology, newer technology of using radio signals. So you can pull up, dial it in on your, I say dial it on your radio. Nobody dials radios in like that anymore, do they? But anyway, so in two weeks from this Sunday, we will be having a drive-in church service. Love to have as many of you come and join us together. We can, we can uh, do social distance waving back and forth, and uh, that'll be a great way to, to just reconnect. Also wanted to point out that the elders are offering a special seven-week meditation series that's entitled Rise in Faith. It's our hope that you will find peace and comfort in hearing your Norwich family talk about the journey of their faith during this difficult time in our lives. The meditation will address our spiritual journey in seven stages over a seven-week period. 
Each week we'll offer two meditations on these topics. They're going to be reality, reason, response, reaching out, reevaluation and learn, rebound, and then lastly, rewards. So we hope that this series, happen, hope to have it up and running this weekend on the website, so please check out the website, but you can also view it on the channel, uh, Carol Hedberg, and so that's also available. We hope you find peace and comfort in this series. Share it with your friends and family. It's going to be very, very rewarding to watch that. Now, if we could, we'd like you to um, take the moment now to pray with me as we do our prayer of invocation. And just like we do when we have the prayer of invocation at church, asking the Holy Spirit to really connect with us and asking more for ourselves to be in connection with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to be in the church sanctuary to do that. In your homes, you have the very same opportunity to invite the Holy Spirit in for a deeper connection to make this time even more meaningful for you. So if you would please join with me in our prayer of invocation. Lord, you have enriched me with the strength of your word. You have opened my mind and heart to see the wonders you have created. You have blessed me with the gift of communication to share your divine message. Holy Spirit, help me to understand the power of these gifts and teach me to use them wisely. Bless all who use their talents to communicate the gospel. Guide those who work in the field of communications to use their power for the good of your people. This I ask in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made Every burning star, a signal fire of grace If creation sings your praises, so will I God of your promise, you don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. But once you have spoken, all nature and science follow the sound of your voice, your voice. As you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath, evolving in pursuit of what you said. If it all reveals your nature, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you say. Every painted sky, canvas of your grace. If creation still obeys you, so will I. Stars were made. 
so will I If the mountains bow in reverence so will I If the oceans roar your greatness so will I For if everything exists to lift you high so will I If the wind goes where you send it so will I If the rocks cry out in silence so will I If the sum of all your praises still fall shy Then we'll sing again a hundred billion salvation you chased down my heart through all of my failure and pride on a hill you created the light of the world abandoned in darkness to die oh and as you speak a hundred billion failures disappear Where you lost your life so I could find it here If you left the grave behind you so will I I can see your heart and everything you've done Every part designed in a work of art called love If you gladly chose surrender so will I I can see your heart a billion different ways Every precious one a child you died to save If you gave your life to love them, so will I You're the one who never leaves the one behind and this is Grace and we'll be doing the children's moment. So Grace, when you feel alone or sad, what things comfort you? Things that comfort me are cuddling with my dog and playing ukulele and guitar. Wow, that's really cool. Well, in John 14 verses 15 through 21, Jesus is leaving the disciples and he is telling them that he will be leaving them with the Spirit. And the Spirit is going to comfort them and will let them know that Jesus loves them even though he's no longer around. Because even though he may not look like he's next to us, we know he's next to us because he's in our hearts. And he comforts us when we're sad or alone. And he comforts the disciples even as he leaves. And as Christians, we know that we can also be comforted by the Bible and praying to God and learning the Word of God. Well, the Lord draws near to all who worship Him, and we're here today to worship Lord and, uh, the Lord and give Him praise, and we uh, hope that this service will be a, a real blessing to you today. But our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Acts. We're reading from chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Let's hear God's Word. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, 
Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandaki, which means Queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is a prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is some water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Over the past couple months, we have experienced a lot of rapid changes because of the coronavirus outbreak. Not long ago, churches were gathering in buildings every Sunday. Now churches are doing worship services online, which has never been done this way before by many of us. We could attend sporting events, eat in restaurants, go to the movies. Remember those good old days? People shook hands and gave hugs and slap the high fives. The current situation we are living in has forced us to get out of our comfortable routines and do something different. We've had to develop new ways to proclaim Christ. All of us are hoping and praying for a speeding end to these difficult days that we are in. Unfortunately, no one can predict when that will happen, but there is good news this morning. God is also at work. Sometimes dark clouds of trouble overshadow our path, but we need to face life's difficulties with faith, not fear. Jesus said in John 14, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We need to pray that the Lord will increase our faith and remove the fear. He will provide us with the courage to travel on to a brighter day, which faith assures us is just ahead. Life is full of surprises for those who seek to know and do God's will. Robert and Mary Moffat were a missionary couple that went through a long period of adversity. For 10 years, they labored faithfully in Bekwana land, now called Botswana, without any encouragement to help brighten their way. Not one person they ministered to had turned to Christ. Finally, the directors of their mission board began to question the wisdom of continuing this ministry. The thought of having to leave the post, their post grieved both Robert and Mary Moffat. They felt sure that God was with them in their labors, 
But for another year or two longer, darkness reigned. Then one day, a friend in England sent word to the Moffats that she wanted to send them a gift. Their friend asked what they would like. Trusting that in time the Lord would bless their work, Mrs. Moffat replied, send us a communion set. I am sure it will soon be needed. And God rewarded Mary Moffat's faith. The Holy Spirit moved upon the hearts of those villagers and not long after her request, a little group of six converts united to form the first church in that land. An interesting part of that story is that uh, the communion set from England was delayed in the mail. It did arrive just in time though, on the day before the first observance of the Lord's Supper in Bekwana land. These are the kind of moments that remind us God cares about every detail in our lives. We never know when or where or how God will invade the, the routines of our lives. He can meet us anywhere. And that's why life with Christ is always full of surprises. If only we could once more be captured by the wonder of God's mysterious ways. In the Bible, the book of Acts reveals that the risen Christ is still active in our lives. Jesus promised his followers in Acts 1 verse 8, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Since Jesus cannot physically be present with his followers, we have been given the Holy Spirit. Christ invites us to become his disciples, to join him on a learning journey, and the Holy Spirit becomes our helper. Remember what Jesus said in John 14, verse 26. The advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. In the Holy Spirit, we are promised an expert whose guidance is never in doubt. God's Spirit is willing to guide us in every area of our daily lives. The Holy Spirit is that part of God which provides an inner peace, regardless of our circumstances, comfort and strength when grief seems overwhelming, and teaches us all we need to know to be effective witnesses for Jesus Christ. We must be clear about the role of God's Spirit in our lives. The Bible clearly reveals that the Holy Spirit draws people to God, but is also uncontrollable, unpredictable, and full of surprises. Jesus provides us with a description of how the Holy Spirit works in the world when he said in John chapter 3, verse 8, The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. What we discover here is the Spirit is like a breeze. We can't really explain wind. Although we can't see wind, we certainly can see the results of it. There was a preacher who wanted to learn more about the wind and how it works. So he went down to the docks and found an old sea captain. He said, sir, would you tell me everything you know about the wind? Well, this sea captain owned a schooner, a ship with sails. And he thought for a moment and replied, I've been a sailor since I was 13 years old, and I didn't understand much about the wind at all. All I know to do is to set my sail and leave the wind to God. By setting the sail of our hearts toward the Lord Jesus Christ, the fresh wind of the Holy Spirit will blow the ship of our life all the way into heaven. When following the lead of the Holy Spirit, we'll never know who we'll meet, where we'll go, 
or what we'll do. Thomas Merton, a well-known writer and mystic, once shared this prayer. My Lord God, I have no idea where I am going. I do not see the road ahead of me. I cannot know for certain where it will end. But I believe the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. I hope that I will never do anything apart from that desire. And I know that if I do this, you will lead me by the right road, though I may know nothing about it. Therefore, I will trust you always. Amen. What a prayer. And we mean the same thing by saying, Lord, what are you up to and how can I be a part of it? I'm ready. Let's go. Imagine our Lord suddenly pointing us in a new direction for his sake in the world. In the eighth chapter of Acts, that's what we see happening to one of his faithful witnesses. Philip was one of the first deacons in the early church. In looking back to that time when the church was growing rapidly, a problem arose. There were a number of widows who were being overlooked when food was being distributed. This is when the deacons were chosen to help take care of that problem. Philip is one of the seven deacons that was appointed by the early church to help with the distribution of food. Acts 3, or Acts 6 rather, verse 6, I'm sorry, Acts 6, verse 3, tells, it that these, tells us that these seven men were known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. At this time, Philip is hiding out in Samaria during a persecution of the church. While in Samaria, Philip receives a strange order through an angel. The angel is ordering him to go in a new direction off the beaten path. Throughout the book of Acts, angels only appear when God wants to do something new and surprising. What God is about to do is so out of the ordinary that he must send a heavenly messenger to tell someone to go. Immediately, Philip responds, even though he is not sure why he is doing it. Philip doesn't have a plan. He doesn't even have a map. Philip only has a practice of listening to and obeying the presence of the Holy Spirit in his life. Now he, he is heading south on a desert road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. Here we see God at work in Philip's life, directing him to the right person at the right time. He goes out into the desert and there meets an Ethiopian eunuch, a man from the farthest regions of the known world. What we know about this man is that he was an important official being the treasurer for the queen of Ethiopia. He is in his chariot reading a scroll from the prophet Isaiah. He had been to the temple in Jerusalem to worship. He had come seeking God. His heart is hungering to know God in a personal way. The Ethiopian reads from the scroll about a suffering servant, but can't make anything out of what he is reading. It's a great mystery to him. Philip is obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. In verse 29, we find that the Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. The Ethiopian asks Philip to interpret the meaning of the scroll. Philip did not present himself as someone who had all of the answers. Philip didn't approach the eunuch with a, like, a, like he would a door-to-door -door salesman trying to convince him to believe the gospel. Instead, what Philip did was take time to visit with the man, showing that he cared and was willing to help. And that's what we need to do today. Take time to sit beside and guide. Philip simply says that the prophet Isaiah is talking about Jesus Christ. 
He proclaims to him the good news. God so loved you and so loved me that he gave his only son. Jesus died on the cross like a sheep led to slaughter to demonstrate just how far he will go to show his love for us. His sacrifice secured forgiveness of sins for all who place their faith and trust in him. Jesus has conquered sin and death and is alive forevermore. He has promised his followers in John 14, verse 19, because I live, you also will live. That's the Jesus story and is what the Ethiopian needed to hear. The Holy Spirit by uh, the Holy Spirit works by communicating God's truth through us. If we obey his leading, the Holy Spirit will open the way for our witness. Having heard the gospel, the eunuch asked to be baptized. And verse 38 tells us, and he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Every person who confesses Christ and is baptized receives the Holy Spirit. From that moment on, the Spirit of Christ is present within that disciple, but too often that presence is just put on a shelf. The Holy Spirit is sidelined as other con concerns take center stage. Philip let Christ's Spirit take first importance in his life. God cares for each individual and will respond to a heart searching for him. Through Philip, we can see the kind of evangelism the world needs today. Caring listeners who will sit long enough to hear the doubts and struggles of others. Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, if you love me, Keep, me, keep my commands. The commandments of Jesus all involve living a life of love. Just a few verses earlier, Jesus says to his disciples in John 13, verse 34, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. When the medical test is, dis is disturbing, love one another. When a family member faces a layoff, love one another. When there's a death in the community, love one another. Jesus also said in John 13, verse 35, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. God's Holy Spirit leads us into a life of love, carrying us through circumstances that come our way however tragic. The Holy Spirit is more than a doctrine or a strategy. The Holy Spirit is a presence among us today at work in those who follow Christ, calling us to be faithful witnesses in the world. May we be sensitive to the Holy Spirit among us to provide energy, courage, and strength to be God's people. And today, as the coronavirus still dominates the news, think of these four words. He cares for you. Take note that every crisis is a wake-up call to seek God. And here is an invitation, as Jesus says, will you let me carry your burdens? Some of you who are listening may not have ever stepped out in faith and given your life to Christ. Don't go through this crisis without the assurance of salvation because no one know what the no one knows what the future holds jesus died for us and rose again offering forgiveness of sins and new life to all who will accept him by faith this morning he stands at the door of your heart knocking listening waiting for you to respond to his invitation to follow me all you need to do is pray along with me dear jesus I ask that you come into my life. I want to know you and learn to trust you. I know I can't save myself, so please help me. Amen. Jesus is welcoming you with open arms, so come and experience the joy of life 
with the risen Christ. You're invited to the table. It's an open feast. Christ invites us all, the rich and the poor, the outcast and the honored. Come to this blessed table where Christ reigns. Come and taste the kingdom of God where all are welcome. And we remember back to that night when Jesus was betrayed in the upper room. And while he was eating the Passover meal with his disciples, he took the bread and after giving thanks, 
he broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat of this bread, do so in remembrance of me. In like manner, he took the cup and after blessing it, gave it to the disciples and said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink from the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Will you pray with me? O oh God, we come to you with uncertainty about the world around us, as well as with confusion about what is within us. In humility, we thank you for the daily bread and the cup. We ask that you bless this bread and cup that we break and take it together at the Lord's table. We honor and remember Jesus. Grant the indwelling in your spirit as we rededicate ourselves to you. Amen. And as we continue to confess our faith, let us repeat the words of the institution. I believe, I believe in, in Jesus, Jesus as, as the Christ, Christ the, the Son of the, the living God, God and, and I, I seek, seek to follow him as my Lord and Savior. This is a strange time, isn't it? We not sure what to think. We're not sure when things will be back to normal, what normal will look like when it happens. We do, though, have God's reassurance that when we come through this, and come through this we will, we'll come through it with God's help, and he will be there for us on the other side. Now, there are many that continue to, to need God's gifts, and we continue to receive God's blessings. So I want to share with you a, um, a meditation for the offering that I think puts a little perspective on what we're going through now. God is concerned about the stewardship or management of the time we have. The concern comes voiced in the command that we do our work in six days and then spend one day in rest and renewal. The world today seems to be so filled with demands upon you and our time that it is hard to spend one day simply refreshing ourselves. As you present your monetary gifts and offerings this morning, think of how you spend time renewing yourself. God wants to be sure to do, that you do that. We will now receive the morning offering. So again, please, if you would, mail in your offerings to support the church's work, not only to support the church physically, but also to support the work that we do beyond our walls because there are, there are many programs that we support through our offering today that continue to need and we continue to support. So please uh, consider sending in your offerings so we can continue to help those beyond our walls and our church family. Now, if you'll pray with me. Awesome, Lord. You find so many ways to bless us, blessings of of calm, blessings of reassurance, blessings of strength, Lord. We ask that you help us to look for ways to receive those gifts and in turn use those gifts to bless the lives of others, whether it's right now with a phone call, whether it's with a, a note that we do. But Lord, you just continue to bless us in so many ways. Help us to continue to, to find ways to carry and share your love with others. In the most awesome and wondrous name we pray. Amen. Well, let's now prepare our hearts to go to the Lord in prayer and hear these words from Psalm 42, verses 1 and 2. As a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? The presence of the Lord is with us now, so let's go to him in prayer. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit ever near, you meet us on every road of life with open arms. We give thanks for your patience, love, and faithfulness. Grant us through your Holy Spirit wisdom and understanding so that you can direct our paths. Provide us with vision for the way and guide us in the decisions we make. Lord, we know that you intend for us to live as brothers and sisters in Christ, but confess that we have fallen short of your will for us. Forgive us for the wrongs we have done 
and for the good we failed to do. We give thanks for the assurance that by faith we are cleansed from all unrighteousness through Jesus Christ. Reveal to us now through your Holy Spirit those things that prevent us from going all out in our service to you. And inspire us also to be equally forgiving of those wrongs committed against us. And help us to show your mercy to those who have offended us. In praying for our church, we ask that anything blocking our service to you be removed. Open our hearts to the adventure of being guided by your Spirit, working in each one of us and among all of us, that we might be a strong and effective witness for you. Ensure in us the meaning of the gospel, that your kingdom may come in our midst. We also pray for those in our congregation who are in need of your comforting presence and healing touch. Help us to faithfully reach out in love and service to those who need support, are lonely, or suffering in some way. We pause to silently lift up to you their names and the difficulties they are facing right now. Grant them all your peace, we ask. Merciful God, in praying for our world, remind us again of the necessity to follow your way of peace as demonstrated through the life of Jesus. Bring relief, we pray, to those suffering from COVID-19, and may your calming presence be felt among those afraid in isolation so that they may be comforted. Lord, in this coming week, Open our eyes to see you waiting on the roadways of life. Encourage us as we face our struggles and lead us into paths of righteousness for your, your name's sake. And we ask all this in Christ's name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Verses 1, 4, and 5. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God, verse 4. Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. I cannot fall, listening every moment to the Spirit's call, resting in my Savior as my all in all, standing on the promises of Oh.
And now may your love abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Amen.